The Liberal National Coalition have defied the polls and claimed victory in yesterday's election. Scott Morrison will continue to be Australia's 30th Prime Minister, while the leader of the opposition, Bill Shorten, has said that he will step down as Labor leader. In the past, I probably would have been angry at this result, but I've come to realise that what we are witnessing is the will of the Australian public. Whether I agree with the LNP's policies or not makes no difference when it comes to the federal election. Ultimately, the Australian people have overwhelmingly supported the coalition over Labor, and that's just the way things are. There's no use being angry about it. Looking at the raw numbers, we can see that the Coalition have won 74 seats, needing 76 to form a majority government. It's still not clear whether they will be able to form government in their own right, or need to rely on a partnership of independent MPs in a minority government, but certainly, the LNP have won. The Labor Party have only won 66 seats so far, completely going against opinion polls and suffering a humiliating defeat. Bill Shorten's campaign was just not good enough to convince the majority of Australians that things like climate change and getting rid of negative gearing are important. Consequently, Bill has no other option but to step down as Labor leader. The Greens have maintained about 10% of the overall vote to hold onto a single seat in the House of Reps with Melbourne MP Adam Bant. Clive Palmer's United Australia Party have not done very well. Despite Clive spending about $60 million on advertising, it appears that his party have failed to win a single seat. One Nation, although they've had a small swing towards them, have also failed to pick up any seats. Independents have picked up three seats. Andrew Wilkie has been re-elected to the seat of Clark. There was a name change from Denison. Helen Haynes has claimed victory in the northeastern Victorian seat of Indi, while Zali Stegall has bumped off Tony Abbott from his long-held seat of Warringah in the north of Sydney. Catter's Australian Party have retained one seat in Kennedy, with the leader Bob Catter being re-elected. The Centre Alliance's Rebecca Sharkey has claimed victory over Georgina Downer in Mayo. Five seats are still in doubt, but what is not in doubt is that the Coalition will continue to be in power for the next three years. When it comes to the Senate, the LNP will likely have 33 total seats, Labor 26, the Greens 9, Centre Alliance 2, One Nation 1, and other parties 1, which is for the Jackie Lambie network in Tasmania. Three seats remain in doubt. Australians as a whole have voted against negative gearing changes and have decided to maintain the current leadership. It's possible that we're becoming a bit sick of a revolving door of Prime Ministers. Ultimately, Scott Morrison made the campaign all about economic management and himself. It turns out that jobs and fear of change were just too dominant within the Australian public. As the Prime Minister declared victory, he said, I've always believed in miracles. It's always been for those of you watching this at home tonight, for me and for my government, for all of my team, it's all about you. Tonight is not about me. It's not about even the Liberal Party. Tonight is about every single Australian who depends on their government to put them first. We've got a lot of work to do, and we're going to get back to work. We're going to get back to work for the Australians that we know go to work every day, who face those struggles and trials every day. Mr Shorten, on the other hand, has conceded the election to Mr Morrison and the Coalition. He said, Without wanting to hold out any false hope, while there are still millions of votes to count and important seats yet to be finalised, it is obvious that Labor will not be able to form the next government. I called Scott Morrison to congratulate him and I wish Jenny and their daughters all the very best. Above all, I wish Scott Morrison good fortune and good courage in the service of our great nation. The national interest required no less. As I said, I'm not upset. Australians have voted how they voted. They were not willing to change government. And that's democracy. Every few years, we vote for our leaders. If we make a mistake, it doesn't matter. In another few years, we can vote again and kick them out. We have the right to do so in Australia. We should feel privileged in that many countries don't have this right. The very notion of voting and electing leaders is foreign to them. So at least, despite all the issues with the current system, we still have the freedom to choose our government in Australia, whether we agree with the outcome or not. Thank you for watching.